Let's all go in our Bibles this morning to Exodus chapter 2. All right. I just want to uh, echo uh, Karen's, uh, Pastor Karen's um, announcement about June 4th, Vision Sunday. Uh, we're doing the sound panels. That's about $53,000 to get all that nice little dressing on the walls, and it's just going to improve a lot of the echo that we, and a lot of people, it affects hearing and everything. So we really want to work on that. Along with, we're great to have Cole Evans with us right now. We're trying to standardize our sound system. That's a two-prong approach we're trying to do to work to improve our sound in this room. And um, so we pray uh, that as we move forward. Uh, I have one announcement this morning. I want to mention the passing away of Tony Long's uh, mother, Kathy Young. And uh, we just want to be praying for Tony and Dominique and the family as they're in this uh, season of grief. And just also Randy, it's good to see you this morning. That's Kathy's husband. And we just want to uh, surround them with our prayers and just our encouragement uh, in this time, especially around a Mother's Day season. That's a tough go as she passed away on Wednesday, early Wednesday morning, and we're praying for, for them as they go through this season. Everybody said amen. Okay. I, want to, I do want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. And here today, and how many mothers do we have here today? Just raise your hand. Okay. All right. There's a, let's give them a hand right now. Yeah. How many grandmothers do we have here today? <laughs> I see, see those hands. How many great-grandmothers do we have? Wow, I see those hands. How many great-great-grandmothers do we have? Yeah. All right. You know... On Mother's Day, we, we have to re, be respectful of situations. Uh, grandparents can be raising children. Uh, you have uh, foster parents. You know, uh, I know one pastor from Man House, Mark Estes, he was a foster parent to 40 children. 40 children, and that's just a, a remarkable uh, thing. People who have lost a child, uh, people who have recently lost a mother, and um, infertility issues, you know, at this season, it could be a very uh, hard issue, hard time. Uh, parental abandonment issues, you know, we have those in our, even our congregation who are single dad situations, and they're being both father and, and the mother. And we have blended family situations, which is a challenge in them as well. And there were children who were raised by their siblings. And my mother was actually one of those situations where her dad raised her and an aunt was there. Her mother, had, my mother's mother had passed away. And actually the eldest um, uh, sibling was actually a mother very much in the house for much of the time. And so we, we have those uh, complicated situations. And when we think of the body of Christ, uh, there are always divergent experiences going on at the same time. People who are rejoicing, people who are mourning, people, you know, that, that goes on uh, in the body of Christ. And we always need to be uh, sensitive of that and be aware of that. And I, I want the congregation to know as pastors, uh, we are aware of that and we're just praying for and recognizing that as well. And even the story uh, we're looking at this morning, um, we are looking at today is the story of a mother who gave up her child unwillingly for adoption. And, but it was a choice of that, whether it would be life, it would either be life or death. And she, she chose life, even though it was a very complicated and difficult uh, kind of situation. And um, so this morning I want to hi highlight a, a godly mother, uh, a godly example of one mother uh, in the Bible, and her name is Jochebed. Jochebed. How many have heard of Jochebed? This is Exodus uh, 6, um, 20. She is mentioned, and she is the, the mother of Moses, the mother of Moses. And uh, Jochebed uh, in the Hebrew uh, means Yahweh is glory, and that God would get, get the glory. And her, so Yah it is her first part, that's Yahweh, and Kebed is the idea of weight or glory. And uh, she was the mother of two older children. She had Miriam, 
an older daughter, and also Aaron, who we know about. And Exodus 2, 1 to 4, let's all stand for the reading of the word. Okay, here we go. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as a wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, and put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And he, his sister, stood afar off to know what would be done to him. And then I also want to read this verse out of Hebrews. Here, Hebrews 11.23. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Hebrews 11.23 uh, says those lines. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him. So the Hebrews at this time, it's 1400 B.C. They're in, in a time of, um, they're in slavery. And uh, the, the edict had gone out that there would be a genocide of the Hebrew boys. It had gone out that the Egyptians and also the um, midwives would kill the children, kill the boy children as they, they came out. And it was in that kind of scenario, it was a, it was a brutal, a cruel world that Moses was born. But uh, notice it says, it was by faith, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him. The Bible says, whatever is not of faith is sin. And uh, parenting and, be and being a mother requires faith. It is an ongoing act of faith. And having begun in faith, we continue in faith. And the world our, our children are born into, um, you know, first of all, it's a, it's a very beautiful world. Did you know Newburgh was actually named as one of the top most beautiful places uh, top in the top 50 in all the world for most beautiful places uh, in, in the world, which is an amazing thing. And we are in a, why would anyone want to move to Texas or Tennessee? I, I do, do not understand that at all. It is absolutely gorgeous. But there, there's another end of things that it is a, it's a, it's a bad, bad world. And the sin has gotten in and the de uh, deprivation of man, you know, and we deal with uh, immorality issues. We deal with safety issues. We deal with the ongoing uh, b wrestle that we, f we feel with false belief systems and false worldviews and everything else like that. And there's that, that tension that we, we are feeling. It, it, it is a hostile world. And it requires faith to raise our kids in a hostile world. It takes a courage by, by, by mom and dad and by mom. That, that there's a good Canadian word there, mom. You know, it's not mom, okay? All right? And, uh, the, 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 and we need to live by faith. And faith is a confidence in a living God. How many have a confidence in a living God? And in the promises of the scripture, we need to, each one of us, take a hold of those in the midst of this world. We have to start by faith. We can't be paralyzed by, by the present situation we we're in as parents, cripple us by fear. But, but mother and father, we need to rise up in faith, believing God. And, and notice here that, that this couple here... Um, his name is actually, uh, Exodus 6.20 tells us his name is Amram, okay? And her name was Jochebed in Exodus 6.20. We're told their names. But they were a unit, Jochebed, and they, they were a unit that were united, uh, coming out of the same tribe. They believed the same thing. They, they were, hey, we want to say their prayers were reunited together. We want to say they believed the same thing. They're, they're on the same page. And, and that is a great way uh, for parenting to begin. 
is that those parents that are they're on sa- the same page with with their spouse, and so they're working uh, this through. If you're a single person here today, okay, marry a believer. Everybody say amen to that one. All right, you know, a mutual growing faith in Jesus Christ is a great place to start a relationship. That is a great place. Now. Uh, what can compare to a mother's love? You know, you know, no, no doubt uh, Jochebed um, had a mama bear instinct into play for the, the preservation of her child. The, the book of Hebrews tells us that, that both parents were involved in the plan to hide uh, baby Moses. But Exodus stresses the actions of Jochebed. And sure, uh, Father Amram uh, was a good man. Uh, but Jochebed was a, a single focus determined. Yet there was w- this working together as a couple. They're working on it, and they're doing it. And, uh, you know, they're, they're doing it as a unit. How many know parents, uh, sometimes the kid tr- kids try to work divide and conquer, you know? They, 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 they try, they say, hey, dad won't let me do this, but maybe mom will. You know, how many have ever had that experience? You know, and it's great if man, husband and wife, uh, they, they pull it together and they, they work as a unit on that one. Um, you know, guess who feeds the dog at the table in our family? Okay, it was a little different. Uh, and same way with our parenting, it was a little different between Karen and I. Hey, the dog needs food from the table, okay? That's, uh, but, but as Jochebed, uh, um, I think of as a, as a married man, uh, and as married men, we've, we've all had experiences uh, when mama wants something, you know, and sh- she gets it, you know. <laughs> it is going to happen. You know, when mama's not happy, no one's happy, right? And, and when it came to baby Moses, there was something within Jochebed that just got moving, and it just started going in her, everything in her power. Her faith was accompanied by actions. She just didn't say in the midst of her culture, in a hostile world, she didn't just say, hey, let's just throw this baby to the crocodiles. You know, she just, she, there was something within her that rose and said, hey, I'm not going to let my child die. I'm not going to let my child be uh, a product of everything that, what this world is saying, what the king of this world is saying, what the the spirit of this age is saying. I'm not going to permit that. And she, she began to cultivate and develop a scheme and a plan within her mind that she says, this is a strategy that I need to work against the spirit of what is going on in this world to, to provide and to cause a protection upon my child. And there's something we need to, that needs to be said about the subtle, quiet influence of a, of a godly mother, the subtle, quiet influence of a godly mother. In Hebrews 11.33, we read these words, okay? By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. They ruled with justice, received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched the flames of fire, escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received loved ones back again from death. And you, you look at this uh, faith chapter, Hebrews 11, and you say, as a mother, you think, I, I could never be that woman of faith. Man, I, I've never stopped the mouth of lions. I've never uh, walked through fire and, and survived and lived through fire and everything. But it was these words. It is by faith, in Hebrews eleven twenty three 23 again, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. In God's list is a mother, okay? In God's list, there are parents, you know, who are protecting their kids in a hostile world. Those parents, those mothers, those fathers are making it into the to the hall of fame of faith that they, they are making. Well, how many mothers of toddlers do we have here? Toddlers, okay. 
All right. How many are, are raising teenagers right now? You're raising teenagers. Okay. You know, the uh, seven-year tribulation from the sixth grade to the twelfth grade, right? You know, and you just, it's like you're trying to survive and you're trying to make it, you know, through those things. Hey, how many are, are parents of adults? Yeah, young adults or adults? You know, hey, you, all of us make the list. If we are, we are living by faith in the midst of the struggle and the hostilities of this world, imparting into our kids the life of God, the goodness of God, we are people of faith. And could you imagine, just, just for a second, you know, just uh, here's a newborn baby. Okay, Jochebed has the birth, the home birth. You know, they probably had a midwife, a, a, a Egyptian midwife who let the child live. She receives this healthy child in her home. She's, she's feeding her, and she's trying to hide this baby. She's being absolutely quiet. She's not talking to anybody. She can't just pass out, hey, birth announcement. We've, we've had a baby. Everybody celebrate with us. They're trying to hide it because they know very well that this child could be murdered. And this child, as it gets older, you know, the one month, it's fine. The second month, it's, you know, she's, she, day and night, this is happening. She, the baby is crying. It, it's getting bigger. It starts crying louder. And it's like, God, what in the world do we do in the midst of this situation? And, you know, it's, but it can be somewhere along the way, the idea is, she, she comes up with the idea Maybe a little waterproof ark with twisted bulrushes and some hot tar inside and out. You know, I could make a little boat. I could put it into the reeds, you know, and I could, I could put out this child. And maybe, you know, just like you would give a, a, a baby at a hospital or an orphanage and leave it at the steps. Maybe, Lord, maybe somebody would pick this up, to this child up and have compassion on it. Lord, I don't want to do this. I want to keep this child child but this child is now leaving my home I have to surrender this and tr trust you in the midst of this with this child and all of these emotions are going on in her head you know in, in Paul's writings there's a you know you, you read um, in the book of Ephesians you read in the book of Colossians you read in the book of Titus you know, the home was to be the model. It was to be the place of how the gospel and discipleship changes life. And in that home, there is to be a saturation of the instruction and the example of what a Christian is to live like. Like they were living in a very pagan Roman culture. There was divorce was rampant. Abortion was rampant. There's all these kinds of things that we feel are a part of just our age was happening back then. And all of a sudden, these people would say yes to Jesus. They would say, I want to receive him into my heart and life. They receive him, and then they receive the instruction from Paul uh, in Ephesians, Colossians, Titus, about raising a home. And they say, husbands, love your wife. Wives, yield and submit to your, your husbands. Uh, children, obey your parents. Uh, parents, especially you fathers, don't exasperate your children. Don't get constantly angry at them. And in became a example and a model of what kingdom life was to be like. All of a sudden, it represented to the whole world that they're, hey, wow, did you see Joe over there? He, he used to be violent. He used to be foul mouth. And all of a sudden, he used to just speak evil of his wife. He's possibly getting a divorce. But all of a sudden, there's just this uh, love that is pouring out to his heart for his wife. And his wife, you know, is listening to him finally. You know, there's all of a sudden that these children, there's some order, there's some respect, there's some purpose in that home. Man, what an example of kingdom living. And all of a sudden, they were drawn into, in that foul culture of these families that represented kingdom living. There is something to be said about a quiet lifestyle. A quiet lifestyle that represents godly living. 
All of a sudden, it penetrates it through, and it works through, and it becomes a, that mother becoming the hub of all the frantic motion in that home. Now, there's this phrase here in the New King James Version. It says that Moses was a beautiful child, a beautiful child. The book of Hebrews says he was an unusual child or special or not ordinary. You know, and I know some of your parents are saying to me, yeah, I've got an unusual child. You know, my child is special, you know. But uh, <laughs> the Acts 7.20 says these words, at this time Moses was born and was well-pleasing to God. There was, there was favor. There was blessing. There was calling on his life. He was brought up in his father's house for three months. Every parent uh, thinks their child is special. Every one of us think our ch children is a prodigy, you know, and uh, that they're just amazing kids. And uh, th that's what a parent should do. We begin to see the grace in their life, the unique giftings, the talents, the, the intelligence, the personality. Your child is extraordinary. Everybody say amen to that. But prophetic faith is the spiritual eyes that see the, the favor, and it sees the blessing, it sees the calling on your child. It, our child is going to do great things for God. My child is going to have a high and holy divine purpose on his life. And there needs to be this cry in our heart that we say, Lord, give me eyes of faith. Give me eyes of faith to see what God is going to do in the, this, this child. Besides being everybody is created, every person, every individual around the world has been created in the image of God. There is divine giftings and abilities that the Lord has provided every person, intelligence. But besides that, the Christian grace that comes on a person's life it enables them to have a divine identity and a divine authority and a divine destiny. There is something enlarging on the believer's child because of them being in a home, a faith-filled home, that God says about that child, there is a power within them. They are a extraordinary child. They are a special child. They are a child of destiny. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, we are to, uh, when you prophesy, prophesy, it says there, it says, but one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, comforts them. And there, there is this point in a parental life that we begin to, we build them up, we begin to stir them up, we begin to cheer them up. We speak words of encouragement. The average child will get 432 negative words that they will hear every day on their life. 432. They will only hear 32 positive words a day. And it... Parents, this is what mom, dad, and mothers, we love you. You know, you come in and you begin to speak over your child the, the high purpose and holy purpose and destiny that is on that child. Right now, 31.9% of teens deal with anxiety disorder, and what, uh, uh, which is higher in females at 38% percent. You know, the, the Jacobet and Amran went against the king's commandment. You know, the, the, the devil is a liar, people. He wants to speak evil to our children. He is the God of this age who comes to, to bring his evil on the minds and lives of our kids. He wants to put them down. He wants to tear them down. He wants them to wreck their identity. He wants to wreck their destiny. He wants to wreck their, the understanding of the authority that they have in the Lord. He comes against us to destroy it. But there comes something within the parent. We're not going to allow this in our home. 
We are going to declare the word of the Lord to, the, to our children. We're going to speak the purposes of God. We're going to prophesy into them. We're going to impart into them the destiny and purpose that God has placed on their life. That is what the parents do, that they would be, be fearless of popular opinion, that they would be fearless of what others say. They'd be fearless of peer pressure. Mom and dad, speak faith into your children's hearts. Somebody say amen on that one, okay? Okay, um, but when she could no longer hide him, again and out of uh, Exodus 2, when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river bank. The, the word uh, ark is the same uh, that we'd use for Noah's ark. Noah's ark. She made a little ark. Noah made a big ark to save the world. She made a little ark to save her family, okay? Placing uh, the child in the reeds would be similar, like to the, the orphanage or the hospital. But other times, uh, we, there comes a place in every parent's life that they have to put the basket in the water. They have to release that child into the waves and to the reeds and into the hostile, the crocodiles. And it's like, hey, your, your son or your daughter goes to college, okay? Your son or your daughter gets married. Your son or your daughter moves to the other side of the country. You know, you all of a sudden release them into the midst of that. And what she did at that time, taking the bulrushes here, she began to daub it with asphalt, like just a tar, inside and out, so it'd be waterproof. She, she daubed it. And I just want to give you a little, and the, the idea of that word, um, the, the tar is the same word, at kofur, okay? And it's spelled K-O-P-H-E-R. It's a Hebrew word, which means to cover, to cover. And so that's tar, so it would be waterproof. And I want to give you three things here as practical points. Number one, A, apply the blood. Apply the blood. Uh, Psalm 49.8 says, Redemption, or kofur, of their souls is precious. You know, and every morning... Uh, Job would take sacrifices, and he would offer for his children. And he, di he didn't know what kind of action they were doing, and their, his sons and daughters. Every morning, he'd offer a sacrifice in case they've sinned. And I, I just say and encourage every parent, Lord, I am applying the blood on my children. Jesus, you have died for them. Lord, there's forgiveness. There's grace in their life. Lord, I know there's power in the blood to break uh, bondages and addictions in their life. Lord, I just pray right now the blood of Jesus over my children. I speak, Lord, that you have died for them, that you have given them a grace. Lord, I refuse to allow the enemy to have my child. I put the blood of Jesus in and out on my child, that they would just be, receive that wonderful grace. Jesus died for each and every one of us. Jesus paid the price for your sin and my sin. His forgiveness is available for every person. If every, somebody would just say, I believe in Jesus and receive him, that you would receive that forgiveness and grace over their life, and they would be forgiven. That is the power of the blood. For every and every sin that has been committed, there is forgiveness through the power of Jesus Christ and the blood being applied 
to our hearts. I don't know if you're here today and you've just been walking away from the Lord, if you've just been doing your own thing, but you need to understand there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. You don't have to walk with that guilt. You don't have to walk with that shame. You don't have to walk with that, um, just that isolation and, and feeling that you are far from the Lord. You can receive his forgiveness over your life right now. The Lord wants to apply the blood over your heart and over your, your sins, that they would be washed away. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. There is forgiveness and grace in Jesus Christ. Somebody give me an amen on that one. Yeah. Okay. The next one is uh, under the R. I'm doing an acronym for ARC. Rub, rub them with love. Rub them with love. I need. I really stretched it for the R, okay? But uh, there's not too many R words for applying um, love, okay? Rub, rub them with love, you know? Uh, smear or drench them. Spread, spread love all over them. Again, the word kofer was also used of a henna or tie-dye. You know, you, how many from the 60s, who, who would admit here that you used to wear tie-dye shirts? Okay. All right. I see those hands. God bless you. Okay. Uh, you know, the tie-dye shirt, it, that's the idea. It's soaked all the way through. It's not just an imprint on, but there was an application all the way in. And the word kofer, the daubing inside and out. When we love our children, I believe in AAA parenting. And AAA parenting is this, affirmation, affection, attention. Those three areas. I am going to encourage my child. I'm going to um, give them affection. I'm a touchy kind of guy. And I give, give my kids hugs regularly when I have the chance. And uh, even... So when I was 13 years old, okay, I had a little bit of a spot of rebellion in me at that time. And I was getting back and getting right with the Lord. And I got back right with the Lord, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me these words, go hug your dad. And it would have been sort of cold. My dad sort of grew up with an alcohol father and just sort of had a cold relationship with him. And... Um, one day, I just, so I'm feeling the Holy Spirit just coming on me. Go hug your dad. Go hug your dad. And so, hey, dad, I love you. You know, like every, every 13-year-old, you know, just dealing with that. Hey, the next time, hey, dad, I love you. Okay. Next time, hey, dad, I love you. Hey, to the day he died. You know, it got to this point, okay? Dad, I love you. Jeff, let go of me, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, hey, affection. Affection is so needed. I know a pastor uh, who was having trouble with a daughter, a rebellious daughter, and he read, a, back in the day, a Reader Digest article and talking about the power of touch. And he just began to touch his daughter on the shoulder. Nothing sexual at all, but just a touch on the shoulder. And the hardness that he had with that daughter was melted just through touch. Just a gentle touch of love. And then also attention. You, you just, hey, buying gifts are good and everything else like that. But the, nothing replaces time. Time with your children, attention, focus. One, uh, one of our daughters, she needed the one-on-one. -on -one. She didn't want you moving or anything. She wanted to be face-to-face -face with you. You know, uh, Dad, are you distracted? Are you watching TV? No, honey, no, honey, I'm not. Uh, you know, she wanted to be. And there are those um, that, that are born that way, okay? They, they, need, they, need, they need that attention. <laughs> Don't let her hear that, okay? All right. Putting that permanent imprint in our life, the tie-dye, the gopher, okay? And here's the other one is keep praying. Pray night and day. So that's the K. Keep, keep praying. Ark, apply the blood. Rub them with love. Keep praying. Pray night and day. Devote yourself to prayer. Uh, Psalm 55, 11 and 12 says these words. It says, for you bless the righteous, O Lord. 
you cover them with favor. You cover them with favor as with a shield. And begin just praying the blessing over your child. If your child is not coming around, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare the favor. I declare blessing on them. I declare you're going to touch them deeply in, in all they're, they're doing. I have a friend who's having trouble with some adult children right now. And him and his wife used to be 7, eight, 7 to 8 p.m. every night. was They'd watch a TV show together. And they said, hey, TV's canceled right now. 7 to 8, we are just going to be praying for our kids. They go on walks together, pray, 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 pray. When things are going bad, accelerate your prayer life. Don't weaken it. Begin to lift up the voice and cry and just say, God, work mightily in my children. Touch them, Lord. Bring them out of that addiction. Bring them out of that despair. Bring them out of that depression. Bring them out of that, you know, Lord, let them experience you. Let them have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Lord, Jesus, touch their life. Intercede. Cry like their life depends on it because it does. Your prayers make a difference. Begin praying and crying out. Don't have a, oh, just, oh, Lord bless them. Lord bless them. Get serious about your prayers. Amen? Ark. Okay, so who could have thought, people, and imagine this little baby in the reeds? You know, later, you know, there was Miriam watching where she'd go. Miriam sees Pharaoh's. Um, daughter gets the child. They bring Jochebed jo- for n- a number of years until the child is weaned, f- feeding. Then Moses goes into the Egyptian system. Who would have thought, people, who would have thought that he would be a deliverer, that he would be um, a lawgiver, that he would be a prophet, that he would be a world changer? People, I am so thankful for the ministry of mothers. I'm so thankful for the blessing that they pour on to, to our kids and the children and, you know, adopted mothers in, in the church. You know, there are some mothers in Israel here who have taken on people who are just abandoned, basically, and orphaned, and come and just uh, put their arms around them, ministered to them, prayed for them, and just seen people restored and healed in their lives. And there's just a, who would have thought, who would have thought of what God could do by faith, determined faith, quiet faith, prophetic faith, fearless faith, and a little ark. All those things could have been done by one mother. Powerful, people. It's powerful. Amen. Let's all stand. We can have the musicians come. We do have a special gift here after the service for every mother. But right now, I'm going to have Karen come up, and she's going to pray a powerful prayer over the ladies of the house. And here she is. We're giving a gift today for all the ladies. Uh, 18 and are out of high school and up, I guess is a better way to say it. So you're a lady. And um, we just put, it's soap. And we had it handmade, and it's really cool and nice fragrances and all that. But there's a verse that goes with that soap, and it's from Ephesians 5.26. And a little bit of what Pastor Jeff was just saying there about how uh, the marriage and family unit that is so natural to us is actually supposed to be a spiritual example of what happens with the Lord towards us, his children, and how beautiful that is. And that scripture in there is about how we are washed by the water of the word. It goes with soap, okay? And just that is, that's what that ark is. It's just, you know, here we've got in the elements of this beautiful story we just heard today, we've got the water, we've got the wrapping and the washing and the, you know, the baby just floats on down there. But there's a beautiful principle that when we pray over our children, when we speak life into our children, we are actually, you know, the words of God is what goes out over their lives, and it washes them. It 
floats them in the word, which is what preserves them as they go down that river of life in which we have no more control. We just, ah. So as long as you have control, you use it. And our control is our words and the word. And we speak that out to speak the word of God over our children, speak words of life, speak words that will preserve them and keep them as they go down that river of life. Okay, let's pray. And if, um, if your mother is here today, you just put your hand on her shoulder and you're going to pray for her, gather around her, give her a good squeeze. Lord, I pray for mighty women. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I pray for mighty women in this house, Lord, who are raising their families. And, Lord, I pray for the immense responsibility but also privilege it is to have you on our side, Lord, as we do this monumental task. We are all frail and we fail and we make mistakes and we have to even say sorry to our kids sometimes. But through it all, Lord, you are there. You help us. You give us wisdom. You give us discernment as we make decisions for their lives, Lord. Each child so different in the things we speak into them. I pray, Lord, just a blessing on every woman here as she speaks into the lives of others. Lord, natural kids and spiritual kids. There are so many who just need a motherly word of affirmation, a motherly word of counsel, a motherly word of wisdom. And I pray, Lord, that when we open our mouths, that's what comes out, Lord, your word, that your word would be our words. And we would speak those words of life over our families, over our kids, over grandkids, over spiritual kids. Lord, that we would be those who bring blessing and put protection a little ark around every life, Lord, and send them on their way, Lord, into the destiny that you have prepared for them. In your name we pray. Everybody said, amen. God bless you today, and make sure you get your gift as you leave. We're going to sing here.